Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will discuss beta migratory insertion. We started discussing in the last class. Beta migratory insertion first reported was first reported in 1962. Since then it has revolutionized or it has evolved in a way perhaps no other uh, reaction has been evolved in organometallic chemistry in that fashion. Um, you know, quite a number of reactions like hydroformylation, hydrogenation and jiggler nata polymerization rely on beta migratory insertion as the key step. Let us look back at the beta migratory insertion and today we will discuss little more in depth about beta migratory insertion. So, as we tried to discuss in the last class, beta migratory insertion involve this um, metal with a hydride and olefin coordinated for example, and then we will get a metal alkane species as you can see the H is at the beta position. Okay. Now, this reaction you know can be of different type, let me give you one example. You have a metal hydride with uh, two ligand and a chloride, this ligand could be let us say triethyl phosphine and under 40 atmosphere pressure uh, you have this ethylene reacted 40 atmosphere pressure you will get the product that is over there it could be with platinum as the metal right. Of course, first example of any metal uh, hydride species doing uh, getting into the metal hydride and olefin interaction and thereby this beta migratory insertion with the hydride was first reported in 1962, but first metal alkyl insertion at the beta position was reported in 1982. Of course, as you can imagine we can draw the exactly similar thing for this metal alkyl one where metal R is coordinated with the olefin overall you get metal alkyl R intermediate where R is now at the beta position. So, this is the beta position R is involved. So, this was first reported in 1982. Of course, uh, then we can have quite a lot of discussion on this, but most importantly we need to understand when you have a terminally substituted olefin where the beta position is going to be, which beta position the alkyl group let us say for example, will terminate whether it is the less substituted position or the more substituted position the alkyl group will go because both the more or less substituted one you can call as the beta position depend it actually depends on where the substrate or the you know the H or R is getting migrated. Let us try to look at one of the example perhaps which can determine which center whether the more substituted center of the olefin or less substituted carbon center of the olefin will have the migratory group. For you know explaining this we, we have one of the very important example this was uh, reported with uh, cyclopentadienyl as a supporting ligand with lutetium and with a methyl. So, of course, you have an alkyl group in there you want to react it with uh, this propene let us say for example. Now, let me draw the product, two product possible, two products are possible, uh, one of them could be this one. For example, then you have alpha beta of course, beta migratory insertion product. The other one would be your C p stir, the same compound, but here you have uh, the methyl group at let us say over there. Now, in this case again this is the alpha 1, this is the beta 1. So, it all depends how the olefin is oriented uh, and where the alkyl group is, uh, group is getting migrated. Now, 
Now, if you look at these two products, it's, it's both of them, both of them are beta migratory insertion product. The first one, as you have seen, the R group that is alkyl here, methyl to be particular in this case, has been transferred at the beta position. Of course, both the products are beta product, but it is uh, having the uh, center which is more substituted one. The carbon center having the more substituted one possessing the methyl group. In the other one, the second product that we have drawn is the one where the methyl group is uh, present at the less substituted position of the olefin. But again, that is also a beta migratory insertion product. Both of them being the beta migratory insertion product, which one is going to be uh, more in amount or the major product or let us say exclusive product in lot of cases, which one is going to be the one. If you look at the first product, the first product is the one where the you know the overall metal alkyl species that getting generated is having least steric hindrance at the metal carbon center. So, the alpha carbon center which is attached with the metal is having least steric demand in the first product. In the second product, you can see the alpha carbon center is housing methyl. Let us go back and look at the product again. We have the alpha carbon center, okay. alpha carbon center is least substituted or least sterically demanding, but over here you see the alpha 1 is more sterically demanding. Now, if you look back, therefore, the actually the first one, the first product which is having the metal carbon center least sterically demanding is the one that going to be preferred. The first product is going to be preferred and of course, in some cases you can get nearly exclusive product formation. This is mainly due to the fact that metal alkyl species are stable if the alpha carbon center is less sterically demanding that makes sense right. So, let us try to write down that fact. So, we have generally of course, you know there could be different other factor involved. Generally, we have primary metal carbon that means primary one primary metal carbon complexes or metal alkyl complexes uh, is preferred over uh, secondary metal carbon complexes. So, that is in terms of the stability, this is the secondary one, this is the primary one, primary, secondary, primary is more preferred. Of course, uh, you know that, that, that trend will follow primary, secondary, tertiary as you can see more and more steric demand is happening and therefore, we will get, uh, get less and less product formation. Now, as we try to discuss whether the hydride migration or alkyl migration which one, if you have a competitive situation, which one is more likely, which one is facile let us say. Now, that is a very tricky experiment to do. You have to make sure that everything is remained as constant as possible, as similar as possible, then only you will be able to make some judgment about whether hydride transfer is faster or alkyl transfer is faster. Right. That is literally a tricky experiment to do, but of course, so scientist has got around this problem and they have come up with a really beautiful design of the experiment. Let me try to discuss that particular one with you. So, that will be on migratory aptitude, which group that is hydride or alkyl migrates faster when there is a competitive situation or how will you prove that one is faster over the other? Are they working in a similar fashion exactly same rate. Of course, you can imagine that they are not, but let us try to see the example, one example with this. So, the migratory aptitude. So, in order to again, in order to um, you know probe this mechanism of course, it is going to be little tricky out there, um, but I think scientists are very clever in designing this experiment this rhodium complex. Okay. 
Now let me write down the experiment and I will try to explain lit, uh, along with it. So this is the rhodium complex with the olefin coordinated. Now you have a protonation okay. of course you know proton will bind with the metal center and overall you will have CP star L rhodium and olefin coordination along with the hydride species in there and this is a plus complex right. Now of course from this intermediate you can expect that you know your product formation will be going on and in this case the product would be the one where rhodium is having the alkyl group. So once again alpha beta at the beta position this hydride this hydride is getting migrated right. So again this will be at complex. Now if you do the electron count I should have done that initially this should be 18 electron count and this ligand could be this trimethoxyphosphine and CP star as you know is uh, C5 Me5 right. So this is a beta migratory insertion where you have the hydride transferring to the beta position of this olefin. So alpha beta beta position hydride is getting transferred. Again uh, this is an 18 electron complex and so on. Now once you have this olefin excess okay. Now this reaction can be done at minus 30 degree C. This is important to note this reaction can be done at minus 30 degree C. Now delta G for this reaction is going to be nearly approximately 12 kcal per mole kcal per mole. So this is 12 kcal per mole very fun, very nice but if you do this reaction in presence of excess you know excess olefin what you could expect that you know let us say you are doing further slowing down the reaction or further uh, further doing the reaction at a uh, lower temperature where you will be able to bind with the another excess equivalent of olefin then the product as you can imagine will be. So after minus 30 degree C you cool down faster to minus, minus 80 degree C the product you are going to expect or you are going to get is uh, the one where you have the olefin coordinated with this alkyl intermediate. Now of course from there on if you try to heat it at room temperature uh, the reaction will be then CP star L rhodium and you are going to get this um, beta migratory insertion this whole group become alkyl then this is alpha beta and the whole group migrates. So what we have seen so far in this reaction we have started with a rhodium complex we have started with a rhodium complex that has olefin coordination in it. We try to do the reaction first at minus 30 degree C which will ensure that olefin will coordinate with the rhodium okay. and also the protonation will occur. So the protonation will give you the, uh, the intermediate where beta migratory insertion is possible. Now that intermediate if you try to do the uh, reaction further it will be of course the reaction will go on further it, you will get the beta migratory insertion of the hydride and the delta G double dagger for this reaction is found out to be something like 12 kcal per mole right at minus 30 degree C. Now from that intermediate at minus 30 degree C which is a metal alkyl intermediate if you further cool down the reaction mixture. And if you, you are doing the reaction, let us say you are doing the reaction in presence of excess olefin, what will happen that the metal alkyl species will have coordination with olefin. So olefin coordinated metal alkyl species will be generated at minus 80 degree C. Subsequently, if you heat that up okay, at room temperature, then so 23 degrees centigrade let us say for example is the room temperature that at room temperature you will be able to get that alkyl group the whole alkyl group ethyl group it to be particular migrating into the another olefin that is coordinated at minus 80 degrees C giving rise to the product 
in this particular case it will be a long chain product like you know a butyl intermediate metal butyl intermediate you will be able to get now let's look at the scheme once again so we have this step of course this is a beta migratory insertion this is the beta position now this is also a beta migratory insertion as you see that at the beta position this whole alkyl group is getting transferred now this reaction delta z for this reaction is going to be uh, something like 22 kcal per mole so if you look at what we are now having is very is a very interesting situation where we can follow the energy profile or energy uh, demand for the alkyl group insertion into the olefin ethyl to be particular ethyl group insertion into the olefin everything else remains exactly same over here we have the this hydride migrating at the beta position so if you compare and try to look at this step and the step over here the last step of course from here on you can further carry on you know next reaction if if you want but of course you have to again cool it down bind with the olefin you can do further reaction if you don't do it further let's say you stop it over here so you have an intermediate you have a reaction where the hydride can be transferring into the beta position of of there uh, of the olefin same way in this olefin exactly remain everything remains same on the all in place of hydride you have the alkyl group now alkyl group is migrating at the beta position of it so it is i think it is a very very good experiment we have a s now then a clear cut example that can compare these two cases right we have a very clear cut example that can compare these two cases one is hydride migration beta migratory insertion of an hydride another is beta migratory insertion of an alkyl in this particular case ethyl now as you have seen the reaction required for the alkyl group the reaction required 23 degree c whereas uh, the at low temperature you can do the hydride migration the energy difference now if you look at the energy difference let's try to look at it, this energy difference little bit closely so the 22 kcal per mole and 12 kcal per mole overall then what we have a situation is overall we have a situation it is going to be um, you know the energy difference between these two steps is 22 minus 12 kcal per mole of course hydride transfer is faster alkyl or in this case ethyl transfer is slower which is equivalent to 10 kcal per mole and then that actually what it adds up is nearly 10 to the power 7 times 7 times faster so hydride migration is 10 to the power 7 times faster that is quite interesting right one would not imagine that value would be so much right now of course this is happening because after protonation the first form intermediate as you have seen after protonation it is positively charged so ethylene can bind and form the adduct very efficiently in the first case as you have seen after at minus 30 degree c you have one ethylene binding at lower temperature you have further ethylene binding another ethylene binding this is possible only because the metals center is becoming more and more positive and their olefin coordination becomes more and more feasible so let's try to write down the uh, the uh, equation very clearly so you have h migration migration versus r migration and that is going to be your nearly 10 to the 7 times in general if you like to put in general we will have uh, k h is greater than k alkyl okay so that is the in general formula now i hope this is a very simple example and you have realized that this example can give you an idea 
hydride migration versus alkyl migration and of course in general it is you cannot in chemistry usually we, we do not want to generalize too much. But uh, you know that is the usual found trend, but one may not take it for granted all the time, right. You have to see the situation if under the same situation, yes, you can perhaps call that hydride migration is faster over the alkyl migration, okay. So, I guess uh, so far we have discussed alpha migratory insertion and beta migratory insertion. Next, of course, you have seen in the alpha and beta migratory insertion a number of cases. Next, we would like to start with the beta elimination, right. Now, of course, beta elimination is just opposite of beta migratory insertion, right. We have seen oxidative addition, reductive elimination, alpha migratory elimination, alpha migratory insertion and elimination, beta migratory insertion and beta elimination. We will now see the beta elimination. Of course, we will try to discuss with one example as, as always and try to try to discuss further if uh, you know uh, today time, time permits. Let us see. So, beta elimination in general that is what it is called beta elimination. Now, of course, the first step is it is microscopic reverse of beta migratory insertion that goes beyond saying at this point and it is a concerted four center scene elimination, concerted four center okay, that I think you guys will be able to find out by now scene elimination elimination. Now, let, let me give you one example. It will be just opposite to the beta migratory insertion that we were trying to discuss today. Let us say the product in this case particularly, let us say this one you try to pick up and as you know it is going to be a reversible reaction, four center reaction you can show very nicely over here and that will give you the intermediate uh, where this is nicely drawn four center intermediate of course, sorry this should be of course, dotted line dotted line here and uh, you have of course, the other hydride or other species. Finally, you are going to get the product where metal olefin and hydride is coordinated. If this is the n electron complex, okay, of course, this should be no doubt n plus 2 electron complex, right. Now, so this is a generic example as you can see previously we have seen the generic example of beta migratory insertion. This is the opposite of beta migratory insertion that is the beta elimination. We try to give the example where we have hydride elimination, right, beta hydride elimination. Now, of course, it is possible to have beta alkyl uh, elimination just like you know insertion elimination is also possible, but it is extremely rare. We do not see that often, but of course, under special condition you can special cases you can still promote beta alkyl elimination, but the most common one is the one that we, we see almost routinely and that is the beta hydride elimination. Sometime it this step could be a nuisance, it can be problematic for a desired reaction let us say where you do not want uh, beta uh, hydride elimination to be occurring and it ends up happening. So, that that potentially causes the problem for your the desired other product formation more valuable product formation. We hopefully will be able to discuss those little later. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.